So we'll move on now to the keynote address. And to provide this, we have the Honourable Keith Pitt, Assistant Minister to the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister for Infrastructure and Transport. Keith was first elected to the House of Representatives as the member for Hinkler in September 2013. He was born in Bundaberg and spent most of his life in that region. Prior to entering Parliament, Keith began his working career as an apprentice electrician before gaining a degree as an electrical engineer throughout the Queensland, from Queensland University of Technology. He went on to manage his own successful consulting business and family farms. After retaining his seat at the 2016 election, Keith was promoted to the position of Assistant Minister for Trade, Tourism and Investment. Through this role, Keith is responsible for promoting the coalition government's trade, tourism and investment agenda. In March 2018, Keith was appointed an Assistant Minister to the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister for Infrastructure and Transport. He has direct responsibility for the government's black spot and roads to recovery program and policy related to regional airports. Keith. Well, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Thank you so much for the warm welcome. Of course, can I just acknowledge uh, my colleague, Steve Chobo, who's probably had to go and catch a plane. He spends most of his life uh, overseas. There is no trade to be gained in Australia. It's all pinching someone else's domestic market, as I'm sure you all know. Uh, but in Chobo, you do have the, the consummate professional, I have to say. Uh, now, unfortunately with me, you've got someone who's more likely to scratch the back of his head and kick the dirt, say a few four-letter words and get on with it. Uh, however, our parliament is made up of a very broad base and it is a broad church. Uh, thanks so much for, for running through my background. It took a lot longer to, to actually complete than uh, it, it, it uh, takes to say. But I've got to say, um, you know, as an apprentice electrician in, in a sugar mill, you know, in some pretty dark and confined and hot spaces and you know, getting down and dirty with all the things that happen in that type of industry, uh, I never thought that that experience would be of value to me uh, in the future as a federal parliamentarian uh, inside the infrastructure portfolio. But uh, would you believe it is? Because in the sugar industry, they shift some 30 million tonnes of product in around 22 weeks every single year. And if I could encapsulate that nice and simply in, in six or 10 tonne or 20 tonne, we will just call them the equivalent of containers, uh, on road, on rail, uh, through processing, to ports, to of course our international uh, buyers. Now that is incredibly similar to what it is that you do every single year. Yes, it's a different product, uh, but it has the same uh, difficulties, uh, it has the same logistics, it has the same risks in terms of trade, uh, and it has been a real benefit for me inside this portfolio. And I've got to say, I'm far more popular now than I was inside the trade portfolio. When I show up, I usually bring a check. Uh, when you've got roads to recovery and black spots and all the things about building infrastructure, my colleagues are very keen to see me, which is unusual. Uh, but can I say that the infrastructure department uh, and moving forward, we have a very substantial commitment to infrastructure. $75 billion over the next 10 years is our infrastructure investment plan. And I'll talk more about that as we, as we move forward. Now, the difference between the sugar industry and, of course, your industry is pretty clear. Grains, oil seeds and pulses was worth $17 billion in 2016-17. Now, that makes you and your businesses and your industry an incredibly important part of not only Australia's GDP, but, of course, our exports to the world. So it is incredibly important that we continue to support you that we make your life easier, not harder, that we make your businesses uh, have the structures which make them more successful, which means that you are more successful and you are willing to take more risk because more risk means more employment. And I've got to say, as a regional MP, that is one of my prime focuses. How do we drive more employment into our regions and particularly for our youth? And why are we focused on infrastructure for you? Well, it's a, it's a pretty simple number. You know, approximately 30% on average of your costs are in freight. So the more that we can make you competitive, the better we can make our infrastructure more economical for you, the more successful and the more competitive you will be. So I think I want to speak about three things very, very basically. I want to talk about trade access, I want to talk about tax relief and supply chain infrastructure. And now Chobo, I know I should say Minister Chobo, it's Chobo, right? he's, he's one of those people that we work with in the parliament. Uh, Chobo is doing a pretty good job in trade. Can you imagine where we would be as a nation if we did not have in place those free trade agreements with China, with Japan, with South Korea, the TPP deal, 
all of those things which we have put together as a government, given what is going on in the world right now between those two big economies, how much additional risk we would have as a nation. Because we are a trading nation. Let's be very, very frank about that. We are a trading nation. And in this country, trade means jobs. And we need to continue to support that, that trade because it's what drives our economy and it drives our regional economies in particular. So I think we've been incredibly successful in trade. Uh, I know there are some challenges around you know, the subcontinent. Uh, having been to India and, and spent some time there and certainly spoken to local business, you know, it's a challenging environment. Uh, th this is a country where their fresh products have 50% loss simply because of logistics and because they don't have uh, a supply chain which includes cold storage and cold, cold transport. Uh, you lose half of your product uh, before you get paid for it before it arrives. So it is a different environment. But I do acknowledge, as Minister Chobo did, uh, this is a very challenging time for you given the change in tariffs. Tax relief is something we are providing to the government, <clears throat> not only to small and medium businesses, uh, but to individuals. And once again, the reason for that is pretty straightforward. Money in your pocket is money into the economy. Uh, that means a stronger GDP. It certainly means more confidence. And as someone who comes from business, uh, and I was in business for 15 years, uh, all the way from a, a small farm that we commenced uh, our family properties were about 450 acres. My, my family had a harvesting business that cut around 200,000 tonne. Uh, to give you an idea, that's about 20 per cent of a mill supply. Uh, so it's fairly substantial, uh, right through to a consulting firm which grew from uh, you know, me to me in a truck, uh, to me in a donger, to me in a 1,100 square metre facility and 15 staff and working all the way up and down the East Coast. Uh, so when I say to you I get it, I get it. Uh, I understand what those risks are and what you do every single week and every single month and every single year, making decisions about what you do in your forward planning, about who you hire and where you put your risk. So firstly, can I congratulate you all on being in business? Well, it's not that easy. Uh, now I know that uh, in, in the political bubble of Canberra, there are times when you might not think uh, we, we are acting in your interests. Can I tell you that we are? And there are those of us in there who do get it, who've done this before who have paid wages, who've worried about what we're going to do every single week if we can't make enough money to cover our bills. So we do get what you do each, each day. We do understand what's important to you and we're doing our absolute utmost to help make you successful. So tax relief is, is a lot about that. It's about increasing your bottom line. It's about making you more effective, more resilient uh, and absolutely providing you more confidence to expand. And can I encourage you to do that? You know, Chobo is out opening trade and opening markets and we need to be filling those markets wherever possible because the world wants our product. The world wants your product. Because they see us as lean, as green, uh, as the absolute number one provider of some of the best agricultural top quality produce in the world. And that is why they want it and we need to ensure we maximise your price and your returns. In terms of the supply chain infrastructure, as I've said, we are investing $75 billion. Now that doesn't sound like much, that's just a number, but $75,000 million is a substantial and significant investment in this country. And now we're doing it through a number of ways, uh, not just off the bottom line of the budget, but we are working with PPP partners, uh, with Australian government-owned companies. We are using every opportunity to expand the infrastructure that you will need into the future. And one of those things is called the roads of strategic importance. For those of you who uh, you know, look at the budget, listen to the budget, I know it's not all Australians that sit around on budget night and watch to see what it is the Treasurer has to say, uh, but I'm sure of interest to you is the roads of strategic importance. It is a $3.5 billion fund looking to improve the economy and the economic efficiency of regional infrastructure transport links. Now that is a substantial investment. Uh, we are working with the states and the territories as to how that will be put together and where those priorities will be. It will take some time to assess, but it is critical for your industry that you get a voice, you use your voice, and you, get, you ensure that we deliver what it is that you need. So can I encourage you to do that through your industry representatives, who I've got to tell you are incredibly good lobbyists, right? They really are. Uh, they've, been, they've been very successful on your behalf. But this is a crucial infrastructure investment, $3.5 billion across the country. We want to maximise that. We want to ensure it does what you need and particularly in regional areas. Now, the budget wasn't that long ago. I know it's only a few short weeks, but uh, no one's talking about it at the moment, uh, given recent activities. Uh, but I just want to hit a couple of simple points around the budget, and that, that are these. The first one is we are no longer borrowing for everyday expenditure. We are no longer borrowing for everyday expenditure. Net debt is down to 18.6 per cent of GDP, 
and that will fall to 3.8% by 2028. Now, real spending growth is at 2%. That is the best in 50 years. The best in 50 years. Uh, in 2013, we made a commitment to deliver a million jobs to this country, and I've got to tell you, as a candidate, as someone who came from outside, I was a little bit sceptical. But we've achieved that. That's happened. And it's, it's happened because of you. It's because of the structures we put in place, it's because of what you do for our economy, and it's because you employ Australians. It's that simple. I have a very simple view on how things work. Businesses employ people. We try and set the mechanisms that help to make you be successful. We are developing the National Freight Supply Chain Strategy in conjunction, of course, with your organisations, and we expect there'll be further movement on that in 2019. There's been some 54 recommendations which the government is considering now. Now, I've got a whole big list in terms of a speech from my department. For those of you who go to these, they're usually about 25, 30 pages, uh, and they list out a whole heap of things the government is doing, including spending you know, large amounts of taxpayers' money to deliver the infrastructure Australia needs. Now, without reading that 30 pages, I'll give you a very brief summary. The Western Highway in Victoria is 747 million. The Calder Highway between Melbourne and Mildura is 62 million. The infrastructure investment package for Western Australia is $9.6 billion since the 2013-14 election. The ROS, as I said, $3.5 billion for roads of strategic importance. And in Queensland, my home state, usually in Victoria I say something about state of origin, but we lost. It's probably hardly a single rugby league fan in, in the crowd, I've got to say. For the two or three of you that are here, yes, Queensland was beaten. But one of the more important uh, infrastructure investments for you is, of course, the inland rail. Now, the inland rail will be one way to get you know, more trucks off the road. Now, for those of you who are freight operators, you all know that the freight task is increasing substantially, uh, and the likelihood of you uh, losing business because of the inland rail, in my view, is zero. Uh, we, need to, we need to build the inland rail simply to keep up with the freight task. So it's around a $10 billion investment. It will provide a Commodore, a Commodore Corridor of Commerce. I'll talk to speech writers about not putting two C words together. It might come out the wrong way. And it is about connecting our, our, our nation in a north-south direction. And you will be able to take advantage of it. It runs through some of the best grain growing country uh, on the east, eastern side, on the eastern seaboard. You all know the area uh, and you all know that it's important. But it is a massive infrastructure undertaking. It is a massive infrastructure undertaking. It will add about $16 billion of economic benefits to the country during construction and operation and create 16,000 direct and indirect jobs. And now, this is a big undertaking. It takes a large group of project managers and engineers, technical specialists. For those of you who are out there building things right now, there is an uptick in terms of construction, but that also means an uptick in construction costs. So we need to ensure that that is controlled and managed, but we need to deliver this infrastructure as quickly as we possibly can, uh, as economically as we can, and in the places where we need it. Now, can I acknowledge a couple of things? Uh, the first one is, I think everyone wants the inland rail, but in particular, they want it to run past their place, but not on their place. Would that be a reasonable assumption? Now, clearly, we can't make this thing run through the sky on a cloud-based uh, set of levelling infrastructure. So we are doing our best to work with those who are or may be affected. There's been substantial uh, consultation uh, throughout uh, New South Wales and Queensland and Victoria, uh, and that will continue. So the ARTC is now chaired by Warren Truss, who I'm sure all of you know. And I've got to say, Warren is a highly respected and experienced uh, infrastructure minister who I think will make a real difference to the ARTC pro project for the inland rail. 1,700 kilometres of freight line from one end to the other. It's a large amount of Australian steel, it's a large amount of Australian jobs, and we will deliver it. Can I be that frank? We will, we will deliver it. Of course, we need to be in government. 2019 is an election year. It's a bit early for a plug, huh? <laughs> but the ARTC has held 21 community information sessions in Queensland uh, and consultation for the Tottenham to Albury section in New South Wales. Well, that happened last month. Now, I know this is a challenging project for some of you and probably some of you in the room. So if you're not engaged already, please be engaged. Take those opportunities uh, and come and talk to us. Uh, we, are, we are here to listen to you. We won't always be able to deliver everything you want, uh, but we are able to listen. 
Now, one last one is on domestic and coastal shipping. I was asked to make some comments on what has been a very difficult and challenging policy position for the government. But coastal shipping does have a role to play. And once again, if I can be frank, and I know there's media in the room, and as Chobo said, you'll get 30 reams of paper tomorrow if I sort of make one slip up. I think I've probably made a couple already. This is something we think we need to address. Um, the, the reality of coastal shipping is pretty straightforward. Right? It's too expensive. It is too expensive. Uh, we have far less ships operating in coastal waters of Australia now than we did before the current legislation was put in place by the previous government. So it is something that needs to be, needs to be addressed. There does need to be changes to the coastal shipping policy. Uh, and in September last year, we introduced the Coastal Trading Amendment Bill 2017 into the parliament. The idea behind this bill is to deliver regulatory amendments that make coastal shipping a more viable transport mode and benefit the agriculture, manufacturing, mine, engineering sector, as well as the soup yacht industry. Right, in my words, we want to make it more cost effective and we want you to use it. Right, it's that easy. It, it is ludicrous in my view that it costs more to go from Mackay to Melbourne than it does to come from South Korea. Uh, I think this is a real challenge for us and we need to build on it. So that legislation is before the parliament uh, and my understanding is that it is listed for debate in the September sittings. Um, but you know, it is the Australian parliament, things move regularly. So we expect that, that legislation will pass. Obviously, we need to negotiate with the Senate. Uh, that is the nature of the industry in which we are in. Uh, we, we don't control the Senate, uh, but we do have successes, negotiated successes. Uh, so for those of you who are affected by the coastal shipping legislation, it's one to watch out for. Ladies and gentlemen, I know you are waiting uh, with bated breath for your morning tea. We're probably running slightly behind time. Uh, but I did offer to take questions. So can I just say once again, uh, thank you so much for your attendance and your warm welcome. It's good to be amongst friends, uh, even if it is in Victoria, a long way away from my hometown of Bundaberg. The government is acting in your interests. We are acting in your interests, whether it is in trade, whether it's tax relief for your businesses or building the infrastructure that this country needs into the future. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, can I thank you so much for your attention and wish you good morning, God bless and safe travels. So, as the minister said, um, he is here to take questions. So, if we could take that advantage, so, some interesting topics. So, surely a couple out of that. Um, I guess the, the inland rail. When you get back in next year, if that happens, here's your plug. Do you have a, a view on when you'd like to see these things actually come into operation? Can you? Uh, look on the inland rail. As I said, it is a. As, I'm an engineer, right? I, I think as an engineer. Uh, it is a substantial project, not only to manage but to deliver. Uh, there are parts of the inland rail which are being constructed right now. Uh, the, the, I can't remember the exact area, but I, I can picture the map. Uh, and certainly that construction has already started. So we are doing the pieces we can, we can in the short term. Uh, we are consulting and negotiating on the remaining sections. Uh, and I'd expect that there will be further, stronger movement without putting too strong a time frame on it uh, within the next year. Uh, Warren Truss is very focused on getting this project further underway, uh, but it is a big project, which of course takes a lot of management, but it is something, as I said, that we will, we will deliver, because we think it is in the nation's interest, we think it is in your interests, uh, and the sooner we can get that done, if I can be frank again, well, the better. Any questions? All right, looks like you, you answered all of them. Yeah, yeah. Well, sure. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thank you. Could thank the minister, please.